Hi, and welcome to Effective's Top 10 Tips podcast. Each episode is a quick roundup of practical, easy to implement tips on a wide range of management and personal development themes. As always, full show notes for this episode, including a handy summary of each tip, are available on our website. Just see the episode notes for this and many other useful links. We also offer workshops and coaching on all topics covered in this podcast series. Today's episode is on report writing. Tip number one, clarify the brief. Be clear about what it is that either you are writing or that you want somebody else to write. Use the four panel approach, who, why, what, and how. Who stands for who is this report for? Always have your audience in mind. They are the people who are going to be reading this report, not you. Then why? Why are you writing this? What's the purpose? What's the objective or objectives you want to meet in putting this report together? Then what? What are you going to put in the report? Think less about content and more about messages. What key messages do you want to get across in the report? And finally, how? Are there any conventions that you have to meet in terms of writing this report? Are there particular layouts or notations? And how do you want the report to look, to make it look more accessible, more readable? Tip number two, mind map the content. This can be done using pen and paper or on the screen. If you're doing it on a sheet of paper, you simply put the title of the report in the centre of the page, then fire off several lines from that centre of the page, from that title, and start thinking about what's going to go into the report. And at the end of each line, perhaps put down a heading. And then, for each heading, perhaps fire off some other lines, at the end of which are some of the key points or messages you want to make under that heading. If you're doing this on the screen, all you need to do then is open a Word document, put in the title, and then scroll down and put in the various headings as you think of them. Then move up and down the screen to add relevant messages under their headings as you think of them. Next, assess for each bullet point how much research you have to do. Mark each bullet point accordingly. None, some, a lot. This will let you know how soon you'll be able to write the report and how much research you have to do. Tip number three, write up your bullet points. Write up your bullet points into sentences and then paragraphs. So at this stage, you are converting your mind map into a preliminary report. Tip number four. Use plain English. This is covered in detail in a separate podcast called Effective Writing. And two other podcasts, Added Value Language and High Impact Language, might also be useful. As one of the podcasts says, make words work hard and not hard work. If you want further help in this area, look up the Plain English Campaigns website on the internet. Tip number five, create the structure. In this stage, you need to reorder all of those headings and paragraphs into a sensible structure. And a useful plan is to think about a beginning, a middle and an end. Which of the headings would go towards the front end of the report? which towards the middle and which towards the end. That's sometimes a matter of your personal choice or any conventions that currently exist that you have to meet. But in general, at the beginning, you perhaps need some introduction, maybe a contents page to give people an idea of what's coming. You may need to define some of your key terms and you may need to outline the methodology you've used to create the content of the report. The middle is where the analysis, the case for and against, is presented. That's called the substantive part of the report. And the end would typically have a conclusion and recommendations. Tip number six, create the layout and look of the report. The visual appeal of a report can be quite important. Too much text on the page can make it look intimidating and boring. So make the information appealing on the page. Think about the use of space, margins, fonts and visuals such as photographs or graphs. Tip number seven, 
Check your GPS. Not your sat-nav system, but grammar, punctuation and spelling. Save this until the report is complete, so you only have to do it the once. Tip number eight. Have someone else proofread the report. Have someone else read your report for two reasons. Firstly, to check the GPS. Remember, no one deliberately misspells, so there's no point checking your own spelling. And secondly, you are by now too close to the content of the report to tell how good it is. A fresh pair of eyes can help. Tip number nine. This approach is interruption friendly. You'll find this approach really helpful if you're someone who is often interrupted. Usually, if you have to answer that interruption, then when you go back to the report, you've lost the flow. If you use the process outlined here, if you're interrupted, you know exactly where you are when you come back. Tip number 10. Write first time. If you use this structure, it's more likely that you'll write the report once only. You won't do several drafts because you get each stage right before you move on to the next stage. So if you're somebody who is regularly interrupted and tends to over-elaborate and do several drafts, then this structure might really help. So, that's it for this episode. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed the podcast, please share it or leave us a review. Remember, you can find full show notes on our website, plus a growing library of free resources which you can easily search by theme to find content that's relevant for you. We also offer workshops and coaching on a wide range of topics. Links to all of these resources are in the episode notes. Thank you.